black people to have black conversations that benefit black people for the sake of black people. Yes, sir. And we need you to help us talk about radical black politics. We've been having discussions, you know, whether or not it's time for us to create or form our own black political party. We had a discussion with, with the Professor Small yesterday and, and told him you were coming on. He says, well, you're the man who can answer the questions, those kind of questions. So oh, absolutely. is it time? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, like we have an interesting that we have in that discussion now because on June 10th, 11th, and 12th, uh, about over a dozen of us from different radical groups across the country, Amali Yeshitela and the African People's Socialist Party, Namdi, and uh, the work that he's doing with his independent uh, political organization in Delaware, and also um, Khalid Rahim, who's doing with uh, political work in Pittsburgh. And then we have our sister from Maryland as well, and a brother from St. Louis, and just a, a bunch of us radicals. We want to uh, honor the 50th anniversary of the National Black Political Convention in 1972 by saying we ain't going after all blacks, any blacks, and just come on in like the um, convention did, and it wind up being a benefit for the neoliberal um, puppets of the Democratic Party, and they took advantage of it. They came in there with two, 3,000 elected officials. Ten years later, they had 7,000, and now it's about 16,000, 18,000. And radicals are not in that number. We went back to doing what we're doing, conferences and demonstrations and consciousness raising, which is a good thing. But we didn't get the power. The power was given to those groups. So now we're putting together a black radical political convention for just radicals. If you believe, if you're anti-imperialist wars and if you're anti-colonialism and anti-capitalism and if you're for reparations and for the freedom of political prisoners and for addressing the serious issue in our movement of the disrespect for black women, keeping black women front and center, and then if you're for a proportional representation and for supporting black radical candidates that are getting to the root of our problem, and that's monopoly capitalism and its institutions of racism. So we're putting that together now. Some of us have been successful, as Inez and I have been. The two strategies that we're using is black radicals running in Democratic primaries and then black radicals running in independent black party formations like the brother um, Khalid Rahim in uh, Pittsburgh, and he has the new African Independence Party. We gave it a shot with the Freedom Party, but too many contradictions, you know, caused some real problems with that. So it's right on time because right now our communities are in a crisis, and we're talking about first black this, first black that, first black president, first black vice president, oh, first black woman Supreme Court justice, first black mayor, first black governor, second black mayor, third black mayor, but yet we're first blacks are in unemployment, we're first in police brutality and murder, we're first in miseducation, we're first in inadequate health care, we're first in all of these things while we get these first blacks, so we need a black radical movement. All right, so when if the people are listening now and they go to the polls, how are they going to identify your candidates? Well, right now we are just doing the uh, convention and we'll be running candidates next year. Uh, other candidates, the way they identify our candidates is by our issues. You know, we have to have issue oriented uh, campaigns. So, not personality, not just because they're black, but whether they stand on the issue. So, if you see a candidate that is talking against imperialism and moving more towards socialism, against capitalism, if you see candidates, talking about the freedom of political prisoners and for our reparations and things of that nature, you know that's a black radical. And it's talking about revolutionary radical changing, not just reforming capitalism, not trying to move the Democratic Party to the progressive left or center, but dismantling capitalism and looking at a brand new system. It can happen. I know people don't think so because of the, the immense wealth and military might of capitalism, but Roman Empire fell. The British Empire, the sun never set on the British Empire. Now it's a little cloudy country in Europe talking about Brexit because they're having economic problems. So no 
form of our oppression is permanent. It is temporary. We will win. But you just got to believe that. And it starts from the bottom up, winning city council seats and state assembly seats with black radicals, as we did in New York. I got in the state assembly, pushed hard for the freedom of political prisoners, and we got three or four freed. We got the freedom of Herman Bell after 40 years. I got the whole 60-some-odd members of the Black, Latino, and Asian caucus to write a letter to the parole board, and he's out. We did the same thing for Seth Hayes. We did the same thing for Jaleel Montecum, formerly known as Anthony Bottoms. And we got these folks out because we stuck together and we fought for it. So we can do this. And now I had a reparations bill passed in the state assembly. We're trying now to get it past the um, uh, Senate because we have black radical politics. And my reparations bill, yeah, we're going to formulate a commission, but it's not going to be controlled by the state. Most commissions are controlled by the state. We wanted to be controlled by the community. The majority members of my community commission on reparations remedies will be from the community. And Croba, D12, and the Ron Daniels organization. So we're going to make sure that those things happen. We have to get black radicals elected. Right. And you mentioned uh, Chairman O'Malley. He's been on here several times. Brother Khaled has been on as well. Uh, but yeah. we had a conversation yesterday with some uh, some people from Georgia. And his older brother called in and he said, basically, the black people are very conservative when it comes to the issue, especially the abortion issue and, and the same sex issue. How, how do you rate those two issues for black radicals? Well, Where do you guys? The only thing those? I can say is that I'm a black radical and 90 percent of my beloved East New York is black and brown. And we talk revolution. We talk, you know, women have a right to choose. And we spoke, um, you know, up for all of the radical left issues and got elected. And not only did we get elected, we delivered. As I said, we freed political prisoners. We stopped gentrification from coming into our neighborhood. Why? Because you have to address the question of power. People are not afraid of your rhetoric and they're not afraid of you uh, just marching. I agree. I believe in marching because you can't just do it electorally. But we were able to do all of that as black radicals, taking on the mayor, the governors, and in their face, and no compromising our principles. Even when we had to stand alone, you're not going to get a whole lot of legislation passed, but you can get uh, co-sponsor legislation and get uh, legislation passed that you would have sponsored if others you know, will take it on and, and you just work with them. So we got a lot done. We got three parks, uh, six parks renovated for over $40 million, three new $80 million schools, a brand new library, and we have a youth center, a community center, $12 million. We've done all of that being black radicals and in their face, disrupting their meetings and, and talking socialism, revolution, radical. You don't have to kiss any part of the anatomy you ought not be kissing in order to make it. 